Welcome to the fifth video in our Robot C and Vec series. In this video, we're going to start stepping away from some of the natural language that we've been using and start getting into programming that resembles more of the industry type coding. The first thing I like to do is take a look at this repeat forever. If you remember from the last video, we came up to this control structures folder and we borrowed that repeat from ever from a natural language. Remember that everything in natural language is not real programming. It's code that somebody else has created to allow us to program faster with a little knowledge. I think we're ready for the point where we can start removing some of that and start using some more industry style programming. So the first thing I'd like to do is look at this repeat forever. This repeat forever is what we call a while loop. So what it would look like is if I remove this repeat and replace it with the word while. This is going to be a structure. A structure is something that's going to be built with a set of curly brackets. The set of curly brackets says that everything in between those curly brackets belongs to that specific structure. Well, this while needs a condition. And this condition is going to be forever. So I need to create an equation that is something that's always going to be true. So parenthesis one equal equal one. We'll get to the two equals here in just a second and an in parenthesis. So everything that's inside the parentheses is what we consider to be a condition. Right now you can also see here up at task main that it has two parentheses. It just doesn't have a condition. But it does have two sets of curly brackets. So it says that everything between the start curly bracket and the bottom curly bracket belong to task main. It just happens to be this bottom curly bracket is special because that's end program. So the first one is our start program, the last one's an end program. The first one is the start of this while loop, and the last one is the end of the while loop. Well, so that's it. That is that repeat forever. So what, uh, what is this one equal equal one? So two equals is when I'm asking a question. We'll have one equals later when we're trying to assign something. But every time I want to ask a question, I'm going to put two equals in there. So I'm asking it, is one equal to one? And every time it looks at that question, it should say yes. The bad part about this loop is it's an illusion. You would think that that while means that in the middle of it, if it becomes untrue, that it would stop doing that. It's not, it's not quite true. Let's take a look at it in flowcharting. To better understand what's happening in this while structure, I'd like to look at these two different styles of programming side by side. On the left, we have flowchart style programming, and on the right, we have our syntax programming. So if we look on the left, we have our start, and it comes into the beginning of this while. The while then says, is 1 equal to equal 1? If the answer was no, then it would go straight to end program, just like it would in our syntax programming. If that while wasn't true, then it would leave that structure, and the next thing that's there is the end programming. So since it's true, we'll then move on to our until touch. Since that's natural language, that's a hard line of code. It will get stuck in there indefinitely until that touch happens. So that no just keeps looping back in and asks that question over and over again. And as soon as that touch is true, then it moves on to the motor on clockwise. Then it moves into the until release, until that's met. The until touch, until that one's met, then the motor off. We finally then loop around to ask the question again. So that's the whole idea of if that while became false in the middle of our code, it wouldn't have known it. It only checks it at the beginning of each one of the loops. Since it's always going to be true, then it will continue moving through the loop. But at any point in time, it say became false and then true again, it wouldn't have known it. It only checks that condition at the beginning of each one of the loops. Okay, let's go back to our syntax programming. What I want you to do next is look at the until touch. That was the natural language that we brought over. If we compare that back to the flow charting, that looks very similar to that while loop. And it is. An until touch is just a while loop. So what I need to do is create a while loop that can replace that so that I can see what that until touch actually looks like in true syntax programming. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and delete that until touch. So it's gone and I'm going to replace that with a while. And there's a lot of people that get hung up on parentheses, curly brackets, how many of them to use. Don't overcomplicate it. When you do curly brackets, there's always two of them. There's one that starts a structure and one that ends a structure. Parentheses are going to be for our condition, so there's always a pair of parentheses that the condition's going to be inside. But if you have trouble with it, I'm going to come up to this control structure folder. We've already been here. 
I'll go ahead and expand that, and I'm going to come down to Control Structures. When I open this up, these aren't natural language. These are actually pieces of code that I can use. So I'm going to grab the while condition, and it'll automatically come with all of the curly brackets and parentheses and everything for me. All right, so I'm not going to replace the body yet. <clears throat> we'll do that in just a second. What I want to replace is this condition. So this is where things are going to get just a little bit more complicated. And again, this is why natural language exists to begin with. So I'm going to go ahead and delete the condition. I just double clicked it. And I want to think about what is going to be the condition. So the start switch. I, I need to know something about the start switch. And I need something that's actually going to hold it here or loop it here until that's not true anymore. So I need a condition that's going to be true that will hold it in place. I need somebody to not be pressing the start switch. So it's actually backwards from where you would think. I would want to say, while somebody is not pushing the start switch, look at the condition again. Look at the condition again. And keep doing that until it's false, and then you can leave this while loop. So I can't just say start switch. This is where it gets just a little bit more complicated. I need to identify start switch as a sensor. It needs to know where to look for that. So I'm going to put sensor value and a square bracket. A square bracket typically is going to be the name of something. So that's my start switch and an end bracket. So while a sensor value named start switch is a zero, while nobody is holding it. So what do I want it to do? I really don't want it to do anything. Um, I can tell you some programming doesn't like that. I can't leave the word body anyways, but some programming doesn't like it when you're just flipping back and forth between these two so fast. Um, it kind of get hung. It gets hung up every once in a while. So I'm going to come over to my natural language. I'm going to go to my weight. I'm going to drag that over. I'm going to put a tiny weight in there, something faster than I can even think about. I'm going to put a tenth of a second. And I'll get rid of that extra little space there. So while sensor value start switch is equal to zero, then wait a tenth of a second. Then it's going to come back and it's going to ask the question again. And it will keep asking that question indefinitely until that question's not true anymore. As soon as that question's not true anymore, it'll come to the last curly bracket and it will move on to the next line of code. That's what an until touch looks like. So then what does an until release look like? Um, see if you can't figure it out. Go ahead and pause the video and see if you can't think about it for a second. You're right, it's going to look identical to what we already had. It's just going to change from a 0 to a 1. So if I deleted that until release, I could actually copy all of that and just paste it, replace that with a 1. What I want you to truly see is when I hit this fix formatting. When I hit the fix formatting, it tabifies my document for me. What does that mean? If you can look now, you see that these two curly brackets belong to task main. These two curly brackets belong to this while, and so on. So these actually have the same kind of hierarchy with them. They're inside this structure. So this forever loop is maintaining or containing all of this stuff. And then I could get rid of this until touch. I could copy that with this one. So that's what an until release until touch looks like. And then I could get rid of this last one. So that's what untils are. They're just while loops. And the while loops have some type of condition to them. And as long as that condition is true at the beginning of a loop, then it will go ahead and run it. And when it becomes false at the beginning of the loop, then it will end it. Okay, so hopefully you can see that the programming is just getting a little bit bigger, a little bit more complicated, and that's where natural language really comes in handy, because it simplifies a lot of the code for us. So, I do want to go ahead and compile the code. It looks good. I want to go ahead and download to the robot. I have my Cortex on. I've got my switch plugged in, my motor's in, and right now I know when I hit start, it should do nothing. So I hit start and it says my start switch value in the debugger window right now is zero. I go ahead and hit my switch. It should run the motor until I hit touch again and then it should loop again. So we've proved that we can replace those untils with whiles. 
for this next scenario, the mechanical engineer and the electrical engineer have come back to the programmer and said, we'd like to change this up a little bit. What we'd like to do is have you hold the switch. As long as you're holding the switch, then the motor can run. When you're not holding the switch anymore, then the motor will stop. Go ahead and pause the program with all the information and the knowledge that you currently have and see if you can't figure out a program using wiles that will allow us to hold the switch and while I'm holding the switch, the motor will run. As soon as I let go of the switch, the motor will stop. Pause the video and we'll meet back just in a minute. Alright, so I'm going to rebuild this code just a little bit. So I'm going to get rid of all of this get rid of this be careful about what you're deleting and don't delete things that you didn't want so while switch or while the sensor value is a one we will get rid of that weight and we'll start the motor so now I'm just starting the motor starting the motor starting the motor it doesn't hurt anything all we're doing is opening a port allowing electricity to flow through there so all we're doing is saying open the door open the door open the door is already open so it doesn't affect anything but as soon as this is not true anymore it'll leave this while loop stop the motor come back up to the forever loop if this is not true it will leave it come to the stop motor so I'm just gonna close the door close the door close the door until somebody finally goes ahead and push the switch and then we can run it again so I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up just a little bit I'm gonna fix my formatting compile to make sure that everything looks good it does and let's try it so I'm gonna download the robot I'm gonna hit start and you can see that it keeps blinking down here at the bottom because it's inside the forever loop. If I didn't have the forever loop, then it would have only just ran one time. The while wouldn't have been true. It would have stopped the motor and it would have ended the program. Let's see if it works. Now that's cool. But the mechanical engineer and the electrical engineer aren't happy enough. They actually want two switches. It's a safety type thing. They actually want the left switch and the right switch to be pressed at the same time, and that's what will run the motor. So both hands need to be on the switches to be able to get the motor to run. Well, things become just a little bit more complicated because we don't know how to do anything with an AND. Um, well, first what I need to do is go to my motors and sensor setup and add another switch. So I'm going to go ahead, and we're not going to call this start switch anymore. I'm going to call this switch A. I'll copy that and paste it, and this will be switch B. Now, unfortunately, that didn't change it in my code. So everywhere where I had start switch, it still says start switch. So I can double-click this, and I'll call that switch A. Okay, so while switch A is a 1. All right, so after the limit switch is pressed, let's go ahead and change our description. While both switch A and switch B are held, the motor will run. When they are not held, the motor will stop. Okay, so it's not an until switch is pressed anymore. We need to do when switch, switch A and B is pressed, start motor. Stop motor. Well, that looks fairly simple. When switch A and B is pressed, start the motor. If not, stop the motor. So it's this while. While sensor value switch A is a 1, start the motor, I need something that will allow two things to be true at the same time. It's the ampersands, and, and. 
there's two of them, um, just like it was for the one. So while switch A is on, copy, paste, switch B. So while switch A and switch B is on, then start the motor. If not, stop it. So I have a while statement in here, then a stop. So I compile it. It likes everything, especially the two ampersands that I just added. I'll download that to the robot. I need to go ahead and add in my second switch and we'll hit start. So right now one switch does nothing, two switches do nothing, both of them will run the motor. What about an OR? What about either one of the switches, either the switch A or switch B? I have code for that as well. So I can replace these two ANDs with bars. They're kind of hard to find. It's just below backspace. That's OR. Again, two of them because I'm asking a question. So while sensor value 1 OR sensor value 2 is a 1, then I can start the motor. Compile, download, start. A can run my motor, and B can run the motor. What about both of them at the same time? That's still an OR condition, that's still fine. It just has to be one of them right now. That's pretty cool. Welcome to WOW Structures.